11th, we've got the number 13th ranked Tom Aspinall, who opens up as a minus 250 favorite against the Polar Bear, plus 210. Number 14 ranked Sergey Spivak, man. Now, Tom Aspinall has openly said, listen, man, I'm fighting the most boring dude on the roster right now. However, just because you're boring, and this is foreshadowing to the main event, doesn't mean you can't rack up wins, you know what I'm saying? So, Sergey Spivak hasn't been the most impressive in terms of flashy style, all that, but I will say this, man, if he takes your back, if he gets you on the ground, it's going to be really, really tough to get him off of there, man. And even though Tom Aspinall is a big boy in and of himself, um, listen, this is still a very intriguing matchup, I believe, AJ. So really quickly, I just want to pull up because Tom Aspinall, his original opponent was uh, Sergei Pavlovich, which was going to be um, really good because this would have bumped him up the ranking substantially. I think maybe five or six spots if he would have got the win. Nonetheless, the fight's not taking place, and this is what we got. So AJ, man, this is one of your favorite fighters I know. So set the table on this. What do you like about Tom Aspinall in this matchup? I'll talk about Sergei Spivak. Man, like you said, Derek, I really like Tom Aspinall because he's one of those new heavyweights, one of the hybrids we've been seeing coming into the game, bro. Homeboy is fast, he's strong, and he stays very, very calm in the fight. We know, you know, he absolutely, in his last fight, put it to Andre Arlovsky. And we've seen Andre Arlovsky absolutely hold his water for the last couple fights he's had after this one. Um, and he's really... What I like about Tom Aspinall is he's able to get it done in the hands, but his ground game is so smooth that nobody talks about it. He's literally the definition of a killer wherever it's going to be standing up or down. You know, his dad is his head coach, but he's also finding a very smart game. You know, if he sees an opening, he takes it. He doesn't just want to stand and bang. He doesn't just want to go to the ground. He can go wherever the fight goes. But that being said, man, the worst way to lose a fight is to a boring fighter. <laughs> Ask all the people that are that have lost the last one to uh, to our main event fighters, but we'll get to that in a minute. And I'd really like Tom Aspinall, like I said, because he's fast. He's he's that heavyweight that's able to move and groove, and he's able to play the different game however it needs to be played and get the win however it comes. Very dangerous, and he's been doing it long enough that he knows how to use his talents. Like I said, with the uh, Arlovsky fight, it was great, man. The hands were up there. They were battling back and forth, and Arlovsky gave his back for about 0.2 seconds, put his arm down. That hand, that arm went right underneath the chin, got the tap out, and you even saw Arlovsky just at the end of it let out a big, uh, a big f bomb, just because he knew he's like, damn, that was so quick, like, man. Like I didn't even have anything to do. What one aspect though that I do is it raises a little bit of concern for Tom Aspinall. He likes to pull the deuce go, and he likes to actually mm -hmm. pull his head back when those wing, when the punches start winging. Which it looks very flashy when you're talented enough to get it done, like Izzy Adesanya or a lot of the other fighters. You're able to do that. It looks really cool and it ends a lot of style points, but all you need is that one extra half inch for uh, Sergey Spivak to land. Lights out, hits that button, and you're going to sleep. And like I said, you don't want to be doing that against a quote unquote boring fighter. That's the worst one you want, man. But hit me with the Spivak. What are you taking notes on him for? Well, first, man, yeah, Aspidal needs to be careful because Arlovsky was this close from taking his damn head off, man, doing that. Dude, it's funny, right? We can literally, if you're a fan of this show, you know what the Deuce Go is, man. That's the chin sky high in the air, hands down, man. And believe it or not, Tom Aspinall has a 1-0 and record as a professional boxer with one knockout, man. So you'd think the boxer wouldn't do that, would no. Come on, get down. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Head off the center line. Nonetheless, man, Sergey Spivak, man, he is a flat-footed striker, but don't let that fool you, man, because he's willing to get in these boxing exchanges. Changes. He does have a little tough time against these faster, more mobile um, heavyweights that got these really quick hands. And even though Tom Aspinall fits that build, Tom Aspinall is actually the bigger man in this one. Spivak is 6'3". Tom Aspinall, excuse me, is 6'5". And when we're talking about reach, equal reach across the board, man. So I think that if they do get into some trading combinations, man, Aspinall, he has a lot of power, got the quicker hands. But Spivak, he's going to turn that big right hand or that big combination one or two at a time. Don't get me, don't get, these are heavyweights. Don't get me wrong. You know what I'm saying? He's going to turn that combination into some type of trip, into some type of push against the fence to try to just get that body lock, get you to the ground and keep you there the entire fight. He does not care if it is a boring fight because guess what, man? You're getting your face smashed in and you better stay on point the entire time because he's looking to submit you so the man has five knockouts six submissions two decisions he's been able to get it done all of the ways across the board the man has only been knocked out once and he's only been submitted or he's never been submitted actually so that goes to show how dominant of a ground game that we have Sergey Spivak off his back 
We don't want to see that. So if Tom Aspinall can get him there, that might be an X factor. But if he reverses the position, man, how about we just don't keep it there in general? I think that's going to be the game plan for Tom Aspinall. He's going to want to just box him up. But Sergey Spivak, like I said, don't get him wrong, man. He doesn't throw as much, but he's accurate and he's efficient. So AJ, I wanted to ask you about that specifically. What is more impressive? I, I already know the answer to this, but it's both impressive in his own right. Tom Aspinall, he's been demolishing everybody, man. Dude looks like a superstar, but he hasn't fought the highest level opponents as um, uh, in relation to, I mean, Andre Olovsky, besides that, take the rest out, man. It hasn't been the highest level opponents, right? So Tom Aspinall strikes 7.43 significant strikes landed per minute at a 66% clip, just absolutely fucking ridiculous, right? Sergey Spivak, the polar bear, the person that we know is the most boring fighter in the world that is just going to sit there and grapple, right? 3.85 significant strikes landed per minute, excuse me, at a 50 percent clip that's very efficient man that is very very efficient right there so i know both of them are very impressive man but what do you take out of that honestly i think the the spivak um one is the spivak stat is more impressive to me because he's able to stay consistent man mm -hmm. when you're only throwing three significant strikes the round or the minute excuse me but you're landing at a 50 percent clip you're not wasting shots you're not wasting you know energy going forward whereas tom aspinall that can be a thing going you know to the second and the third round he does he stays mobile the entire time don't get me wrong but his his feet do start to slow down a little bit the punches start to slow down the power stays there so he's fine there um but what impressed me most about the spivak thing man is he always is there for a fight he's always a dog in the fight he's never gonna back down and we even saw in his last fight against uh, um, uh, Alexi Olenek, mm -hmm. he was there. He was cracking Olenek on the top of the head. Olenek was dipping down and hitting him with the, you know, the headbutt, trying to break <laughs> yeah. his hand. But man, that did not stop Survey Speedwalk at all. He kept thudding him, and then arguably he out grappled Alexi Olenek, which is absolutely crazy, man. When you're able to out, out grapple, and maybe not in the first round, definitely the second and the third, it started to, you know, it started to go to Speedwalk's way, and we started to see that quote unquote boring fighter come out. But to me, man. There's nothing, nothing more, and we've said it a lot in this show. You know, um, speed, uh, speed beats power, power or timing beats speed, mm -hmm. all that stuff. But if you're with Sergey Spivak and he's able to keep consistently popping that jab and popping those strikes that are hurting you consistently, time and time and time again, it makes it a bigger outcome than if you're, you know you're you're landing four or five different of those power strikes, but you're only able to do it once every you know three minutes, once every two minutes, and stuff like that. So it's a little more impressive to me that Speedbox like that, but. Again, he is very unassuming, and a lot of people aren't scared of this dude. That's kind of the, the, the big X factor for me is Tom Aspinall isn't scared of Sergey Spivak. Most people aren't really scared of him because, like you said, he is more so that s slow, boring fighter. But don't get it wrong. Homeboy is an absolute dog, and he keeps it reserved, which I like about him, man. He stays real reserved, and he's able to pull it out whenever he needs to. Pause. But yeah, what do you think, Derek, going yeah, forward? No, man? Right on the money right there, you know what I'm saying? But I will say, listen, man, that I agree with basically everything that you said. And Tom Aspinall is absolutely not scared of this, man. He even said, he was like, in the beginning of my UFC career, I actually called him out a couple times, man. And it just never really worked out. Like, Spivak never even really responded, you know what I mean? Like, it's nothing personal. He was like, I just thought the fight made sense. So now that this is actually taking place here and Tom Aspinall is probably overlooking Sergey Spivak, I think that's where it gets dangerous. Because Spivak is just like, all right, man, go ahead, overlook me. I just beat Olenek coming off a win against Jared Vandera. I beat Carlos Felipe. I lost to Marcin Tybura. All right, that's the one dude who has been having this miraculous run in the heavyweight division. But he also submitted Ty to Avasa, who we know is a very, very tough man right there, man. So the wins that Tom Aspinall has, Jake Collier, who was a former middleweight turned heavyweight, not really as impressive. Alan Budo, impressive but not really as of late because he's been losing some of his fights you know what i'm saying and then andre arlovsky that's the big one because he's becomes i believe either the first or the second man to ever submit andre arlovsky which is super duper impressive so the big thing that i got to take away here is tom aspinall is a bjj black belt and his striking is so good that that's why the takedowns and the submissions are so effective in my opinion because you have to worry so much about the hand and Lastly, just to make sense of that kind of bloated significant strikes landed per minute stat that he has at 7.43 at a 66% clip, you'll notice when he gets you hurt and he gets you up against the cage and you start shelling up, he lets the hands go, man. And that's a little bit of a problem, though, because what happens when somebody lets it go back and they just hit you with that one because you're just so worried about getting the windmill along, getting them flurries going straight up like a kind of like a boxing, you know, type situation right there. But nonetheless, man, this is going to be a really, really interesting bout in terms of where these fighters go, because you see th number 13 versus number 14, man, both of these dudes could take a big jump. And uh, right now, Aspinall's on a six fight win streak, Spivak, three fight win streak. It's going to be impressive, man. Who do you have and why?
Yeah, this one's going to be a really fun fight, Derek, going forward. Um, I'm I'm rocking with Tom Aspinall on this one. I think he's getting it done. KO round two. He's going to get it done in spe- spectacular fashion. But don't be surprised if Spivak gets it done in this one, man. He's very unassuming. And he very much is a dog. But like I said, I'm going Tom Aspinall. KO round two. Who you got and why? Even though I believe in the prospect known as, or not the prospect, the contender. He's a ranked. He's top 15. Sergey Spivak, even though I believe in the polar bear and I believe in his abilities and his capacities and his capabilities, I really believe in Tom Aspinall, man. And this is the one where I'm going to have to go with you right there, except I'm going to go TKO round three for Tom Aspinall. I think it's going to be really difficult to get Spivak out of there, but I think come the end of the fight, the quickness of Tom Aspinall will be there all three rounds. And I think whether it's a submission, that'll be very difficult, but whether it's a submission or it's just on a hand, blah, 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 blah. If he wants to box him up, I think that's the best approach. So I'm going Tom Aspinall TKO round three minus 250 favorite man so there's a lot of pressure on the man and uh, that's I don't want to say it's a live dog for Spivak because I wouldn't really take it that far but I do think this is one that if you just had a little bit of cash you wanted to throw on Spivak man it's a, it's a dart throw it's a lottery ticket but it might just get the job done man I think we saw a pretty sneaky upset in our in last week's card too man that was kind of similar to this so a uh, big fight in the heavyweight division man between two dudes who I mean really they were just prospects literally like a year ago right you know so it's crazy Things happen just like that, man. So if you're inactive, you get left behind in this game, man. So uh, move on to the main.